All right, there I was. Me and the scope. So I saw this on a guy's channel, Bearded, Bearded Viking Woodworks out of South Carolina. And good guy. So I saw this project and I thought, you know, I'm gonna try that. I need a coat rack. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut my cherry, my maple. I'm going to cut my cherry to about probably seven inches. All right. I'm going to cut these maple and walnut. Okay. These strips in half, about six and a quarter. And then this old piece of walnut that I've had that you know, I needed to do something with. It smells so good. I'm gonna cut it at four inches and that's gonna end up being my side. And I'm gonna have to trim some of that down anyway. Or, uh, no, I might just do it like this, do a little opposite. I don't know yet, but we're gonna do that and cut all this down, rip it down. These are at, <clears throat> I believe inch and a half. Yep, right at inch and a half. And my walnut, they're actually going to come down. Of course, there's going to be six inches of it, right? That's actually going to come down, and that's actually going to be the coat rack, okay, the coat holder. Okay, these are just going to be for space, for show, for pretty, right? I'm going to do all that. All right, good so, afternoon. I'm over at the Charlie Mike saw and I'm cutting down the maple and the walnut pieces that are going to be the essentially the showcase or the centerpiece pieces the uh, stationary maple um, and the walnut <clears throat> and of course the walnut is the um, the actual coat rack holders ish but their dimensions are inch and a half by inch and an eighth and they're six and an eighth long and originally they're going to be a little bit longer than that but just to kind of square everything up and everything i had to kind of cut a little here cut a little there and you know gotta make things happen you can see i'm just getting rid of just some of the bare ends I realized I didn't have my dust collector on at all. So then now I'm over here, I'm going to <laughs> start taking care of that cherry. And that cherry is seven eighths by an inch and an eighth. And it's a little, it's a little bit longer or I guess taller, whatever it is. It is seven and a half. And then those end pieces, that walnut that I never really thought I could do anything with, I'm cutting those outside walnut ends to an inch and an eighth by an inch and seven eighth, and those are four inches in length. Like I said, I never even thought I could do anything with that. But we were able to do something with it. Look at that. Going over to the good old table saw. Got to make sure you square up at least two ends. One end to at least start. Check it. Move your fence a little bit, check it again, because, you know, that whole adage, check 14 times before you cut, that's what I believe in. So now I've got that walnut, and I'm going to check that with my Miles Craft, little handy dandy square thing there. 
You can see that banner in the background, by the way, that was by Signs and Lines in Little Rock, Arkansas. They are awesome. They do my stickers, my banners. They're awesome. Oh, wait. Oh, one's a little bit longer than the other one. As soon as I get a trailer, they're going to wrap my trailer as well. I'm excited about that. Signs and lines, look them up. Great people. Great, wonderful people. Great work, too. Now, yay, look at that. So, wait, wait, move all that. Okay, there we go, because I'm going to make two. If you're making one, you might as well make two, right? Yeah. So... Measure again with my Stanley. I've got, I actually enjoy that tape measure so much, I think I have three of them. Squaring everything up. Flipping it over because that's what I saw Daniel do in his video on. Uh, on his channel the bearded viking woodworks so there's my poplar backing now i'm trying to get about half about half the uh half the width i'm going to mark it because i don't have a scoring or marking wheel yet i'd like to get one i just haven't done it i'd like to start doing some dovetails um We'll see. But anyway, so what you're supposed to do here, which you see me doing, is drilling, pre-drilling, and I'm countersinking as well because you don't want anything sticking out. The stationary pieces, not the walnut pieces, but I'm doing the maple, and then here in a minute I'll do the cherry as well. But you don't want anything to split. You don't want your wood to split. Now, when you're drilling everything in, especially this, you want to make sure it's as low as possible. You don't want your torque all the way up because you'll just split that wood. That sucks. Oh, wait. There's an extra two screws. See those? Show sure did. Now, those three. Yay. Yep. Bam. Bam. Can we get another? Bam. Now we're going to go over to the miter saw. 45 degrees, but I have to move my... <laughs> I have to move my... My miter saw out so I can hit 45 degrees. And I'm about to cut and... Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. wait a second. That's right. Now this time... Kind of 45 degrees. Now, this is kind of where I screwed up a little bit. Didn't realize it at first until I went to the other. And I was realizing that I kind of goofed a little bit. But that's okay. We'll see here in a minute how I corrected that and I made it look quote unquote intentional. Correct it, and then we're like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Woo. Okay. I don't know what I was doing, checking my watch. I don't, I don't know why. Doing a little bit of sanding with my handy dandy awesome. I have two sanders, palm sanders that I use a lot. I used to have a rigid. That thing caught fire. Like, literally caught fire. So, but it worked. It was great. But, this is my DeWalt um, Palm Sander. Random Orbital Pant Palm Sander. I also have a Milwaukee. Uh, both of them are just amazing. I love both of them.
And I'm going to put that back on. Now, what I didn't show was that I realized my back wasn't up far enough. Up far enough. So I had to move it about a quarter of an inch. Which I did. Then cutting that dowel, that quarter inch dowel. Because that's how all these pieces are going to fit together. Remember, they're not even together yet. Yay. So you see that the walnut pieces have a, <laughs> they have parallel 45 degree cuts. <laughs> that's where I screwed up, but that's okay because I actually rounded that over uh, on the top too. And that actually is uh, where the hat and coat hang from and they're not sharp it's a rounded edge so it makes it a little bit better measuring in about a quarter of an inch and i'm having to do this individually not fun i don't really have a a very uh dependable uh drill press so i'm um, using the good old i hope i get it straight up and down method and i did pretty decent but what i ended up doing was i took one piece and used it as a guide for the other so that tended to work out fairly decently Now, what I did was I didn't screw up like somebody else did in his video where you couldn't add any, um, because everything was put together so tightly, somebody, I would say it was a screw up, but he said it was a screw up, but no big deal. He couldn't put any finish on it because everything was put together. So what I did was I thought, oh polyurethane no it's oil based no it'll take forever for it to dry all right well we're just gonna go on with it we're gonna put some cutting board oil on this on these pieces mm -hmm. so i do that all the pieces all the way down the line and just that maple just for some reason man it just looks so good of course the walnut looks good too it always looks good it's like the it's like the i don't know the diva and then the the maple is for some reason maple and hickory i guess it's because they're lighter woods but when you put oil on those they're like oh look at me i'm awesome i can be pretty too so have my paste wax because about the only time you're going to hear about me being liberal is putting liberal amounts of glue paste wax oil any of that stuff yeah i actually put it had to put it in front of the heater because when i was putting this together i think it was like 25 degrees or 30 degrees charlie mike charlie mike will wars it's a household name so it was a mallet that i made branded it with our brand obviously putting all of that together comes out looking Pretty decent at this point. <laughs> now to put that back back on there. Back back. Put the back back on there. Do a little drilling down to use it as a guide. That's right, look at me. I'm old, I have a beard. and drilling it down again not using too much torque because that's not
Now I'm going to use a piece of cedar because I have to have something to put the D-ring holders into. Pre-drill all that. Drill them in. Screw them in. Again, it was cold. Everything's not working well, like me. Do two more, but I had to space these out just enough so that I could add the brand at the very end. And look at that. Woo! Oh, so pretty. Adding the D-rings. I also use J-hooks or those not J hooks, but the little hooks. Um, I guess they're J hooks. I don't know. They look like a J. They're metal. They go in. You don't have to put them uh, on a stud because, let's face it, no homes are actually built with studs at every 16 inches apart. It's just not how it works, unfortunately. Oh, wait. Move the camera. And move everything out of the way. Let's get this hot, huge branding. Whew. Unplug it. Charlie Mike Woodworks. Charlie Mike Woodworks. It's a household name. Now just to add those walnut pieces to the ends. And my wife doesn't know, but this is actually put up in our house. Charlie Mike Woodworks and Design.